So I'm trying to sort out this SCAM DVR unit. Now this is used for my security cam system. I actually did this review four years ago actually, just over four years ago I got this up and did a review on it. It's been working absolutely fine ever since then. It's been a good unit, but recently it just suddenly died. And the problem isn't actually this unit. It is actually the power supply. So this is the power supply it's using. It's a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply. I'll just do some testing on it and I'll show you. But it's not performing as it should. Don't forget to click like and subscribe as well. So this is my power supply connection here. I've got a micro USB connector here, which I've soldered some wires onto, running these to these, which run up to my DC electronic load. So let's go and take a look at that. You can see I've got 5.1 volts coming out of it. So you look at it, okay, that looks fine. So I've got a current limit, well, current setting of 100 milliamps. We'll turn the load on. Drops down to 2.3 volts with 100 milliamps. So that is why it's not working. The power supply cannot supply enough power. Let's see if we can fix this. So actually looking quite lucky here. It looks like there's some screws in here, so we can actually unscrew this one. So I don't have to smash it open, which is always nice. So let's get a screwdriver. Now I have to be a little bit careful because it could be charged up capacitors in here and that sort of stuff. Because I just unplugged it from the mains, so there could be high voltages in here. We'll find out. But you should always treat things as high voltages anyway. Let's see what's in it. So we've got two wires going over the circuit board. So we'll pull this thing apart and have a look and see if we can find what's wrong. But this thing has been running for four years straight. So it wouldn't surprise me if we've got uh, capacitors or several capacitors which are blown in this thing. And yeah, I can see a bulge cap straight away. This capacitor here has got a bulge in it. Those are looking okay. But this one's bulging, so let's check them all out and we'll see if we can see anything wrong. I always need to measure voltages first, make sure I'm not going to zap myself. Alright, so we've got a big capacitor here somewhere, a big capacitor right here. That's the main capacitor I'm worried about, it's only 9 volts, so it's looking fine. It's usually the big caps you have to worry about. And there's a smaller cap over here, nothing on that. Small cap over here, which is probably not an issue anyway. 4.6 volts, yes, yeah, looking pretty safe there, really. Another cap over here. Nothing on that one. So I'm going to discharge these caps. Let's just be doing this a lazy way and just short them out. And we'll do the same on this one. And we'll do the same on these just to be absolutely sure. And then we shall recheck. There you go. Half a volt. You can see it's recovering. See the voltage creeping back up. And this one here as well. Same thing, creeping back up. This power supply looks like it's got filtering missing. There's no filtering. It's got capacitor placements here. Nothing there. There's a fuse placement here. Nothing there. So it's just like there's no actual fusing in the circuitry either. So they've been cutting corners. So there's no filtering, no fusing. So it's probably a fairly noisy power supply as well. We need to check these caps and find out which ones are bad. But I can see this one's bulging, so that's definitely gone. But we'll check them all. It's actually quite interesting, this board. Looking at over here, there's a silver mount resistor. And there's a blob of solder right across it. I mean, was that intentional? Have they decided they don't need that resistor? Or is it just a mistake? Hmm, curious. So, let's measure these caps. I'm set up to 100 Hz. ESR, this one is 24 ohms, which is quite high. That's 30 microfarad, that's 15 microfarad cap. This one over here is a 47 microfarad. And this is measuring 34, so that's low. Got these two caps here. This one here is. 433 microfarad and that's a 470 microfarad cap. Then we've got the one over here, which is the one which is bulging. And this is measuring 434 microfarad, 0.6 ohms, and that's a 680. So yeah, um, they basically all measure a bit low. I'm tempted to replace all of them. Maybe I might just leave that big bulk cap there alone, because these generally the bigger ones on the mains they tend to be better as far as longevity. Um, these smaller ones are the ones which usually fail and say that one's bulging. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. I can see the bulge there. I'll replace those three. I might leave that one alone. Unless I've got something that I can drop in there which will suit. But uh, space is also a consideration on these things. Right, let's get these out. Now one problem I've got is that this is a 680 microfarad cap. I don't actually have any 680 caps. I've only got 470s of 1000. So this one here could be a problem. 
Uh, what's this one? This is a 470. That's easy enough. We've got loads of them. So you've got a 680 here, a 470 here. And that's 16 volt and 16 volt. So I've got a 1000, but I'm not sure that could fit. That probably won't even fit in the case. So I don't think that's going to work. I need to find something smaller. But that's also a 25 volt Nichicon, so it'll last forever. I do have 470s, but I don't really want to drop the capacity down. If I do that, I might. Oh, I've got a 680 here. Hold on. I've got a 680 sitting right there. How long has that been sitting there? Because I've had it for a while. <laughs> it might be my savior. Let's check the caps on. <laughs> See what this one actually behaves like. Let's have a look. Measuring. Getting some dodgy connections because it's a bit corroded. About 640 ESR.2. So, yeah, that's actually going to do the job. I don't know about that sitting in there. <laughs> Funny. I'll have to clean the corrosion off the legs. But, yeah, that's um, looking okay at least. So, we'll, do, we'll put this one in. And if you do this sort of thing, always make sure that, firstly, you're not plugged into the mains. In this case, obviously, I'm not because there's the plug. Um, the other thing is to make sure that things are discharged, like I showed you before, to make sure you don't zap yourself because capacitors can hold charge for quite a while. See, that one we need is a 470, which was also destroyed actually. So it's 470, 16 volts, so I should be able to find something in here. That's 10 volt, um, that's 35, it's too big. 470, 16 volt. There we go. Now you can catch up the voltage if you've got space. So let's pop out this 47 microphone, I know I've definitely got some of them. But it's actually quite nice that the uh, power supply was screwed together instead of welded or glued like they often are. So that's quite nice. So that's 47, like I said. We'll get one of them. Get rid of my older stock. Use that one. So, yeah, chink zing. Anyway, that's a 15 microfarad. I don't have any 15s. 400 volt. Yeah, I don't really have anything. I've got some 250 volts. I've got a 10 microfarad, but that's going to be probably too small. So, yeah, I don't actually have a similar replace that with. So, I'll leave that one as it is. It's probably fine. I mean, it measured kind of okay. So, we'll just. Solder these in. I reckon that would be fine for those. Here's my chunky solder for this because I'm trying to get rid of it. And it's probably better than lead free stuff that's on this board anyway. Right, a little bit more heat. Now I'm not sure what to do about that solder blob across that resistor that's there. I mean, it's been working all this time. I mean, should I take that blob off? Is it an intentional blob? I don't know. I'm going to leave it alone. It looks kind of intentional. So we'll clean this legs off and put it back together and try it again. All right, so I had to change my connector here. The other one, the pin fell off, so I had to make a new connector. Anyway, that's made. So we can test it out now. It's all plugged in. I've hooked up. It's not dead, it's working. Let's show you the DC electronic load. Okay, so there's the load. I've got it set at 100 milliamps still. We can see the voltage has actually increased very slightly. Let's put the load on. So it's still got 5.1 volts, absolutely fine. So before that's collapsing it down to 2.5 volts. So that's a big improvement straight away. Let's wind the current up. Yeah, half an amp, still fine. It's supposed to be 2 amps rated, but we'll see about that. 1 amp, 4.9 volts, well, yeah, okay. 1.4 amps is 4.7 volts, so yeah, it's probably not really a 2 amp rated supply, is it? But 2 amps is doing 4.5 volts. So I think 2 amps is kind of pushing it. It's working a lot better than it was before, so I'm going to call that a win. 
And also, of course, I can't come in dropping because I've got such thin wires on here and I'm going to get voltage drop through here. So the voltage is probably actually holding up better than it actually said it was because of the current loading and you're going to get voltage drop. So it probably is doing better than it looked like it was doing. So that's pretty cool. That's that repaired and now my security camera system should be back up and running again. That's excellent. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like this video and I'll catch you next one. Bye.